Alright, in this video I'm going to show you how you can upgrade your Penta 1.6 to Penta 1.7 the daily build and if you found this video on YouTube I provide a link below that will show you the steps you just open the terminal copy and paste this and I'll show you exactly how to do this and how to download the newer version and install it but now to install the newer version you must have GW on your system or something that allows you to install the deb files and you can just copy and paste that into your terminal if you don't have GW installed without the uh, bracket there, the brace. I also show you the additional features that it has. With Penta 1.6 you did not have the complete brush collection. When you install the daily bill you will. Now there will be a disadvantage of it and I've told you that in my last video that when you try to use the dark theme with Penta 1.7 you do see, see gray title bars in the boxes around your image whereas in Penta 1.6 it works great with a dark theme. But I'll show you that after we uninstall Penta 1.6. Now let me minimize this, but before we do uninstall Penta 1.6, let me kind of compare uh, Penta 1.6 with Penta 1.7 when we get it installed. Now this is Penta 1.6. I go to my help menu, choose about, and it says version 1.6. Now in Penta 1.6 we can change very quickly from one image to another by clicking on the images within the image box area here, and that works great. But when we upgrade to Penta 1.7, it does have tabbed images like working with a browser. So it puts you more in that familiarity for those of you that surf on the internet uh, with tabbed browsers where you switch back and forth between those. It makes it much more comfortable than switching over here, which there's nothing wrong with this. Now let me close out my images because we're going to uninstall Penta 1.6. Now to uninstall that, you just open your terminal. And when your terminal opens, you just copy this command and you paste it into your terminal and press the enter return key, Put type in your password, press the enter return key and it's going to tell you up here the following package are installed or no longer required. If you look at these are some of the add-ins, uh, you probably will not have those add-ins and if you do, I recommend not uninstalling those by using sudo auto remove because when you install Penta uh, version 1.7 it's going to need those. And then once you install 1.7, if it finds files that it no longer needs, then you can use the auto remove feature. I'm going to exit the terminal because I'm not going to install it via the terminal. I'm going to actually download the deb package and I have a link. If you click on this link right here, it will start downloading. If you look down here in the lower right left hand corner of the screen, you see that it's the deb file. So when you click on that, it will download it to the location of your choice. And here I have it in my downloads and I made a folder for it so it won't be mixed up with all my downloaded files. And here's Penta 1.7. So I double click. And for those of you that are switching from the Windows environment, it's almost very similar to clicking on an executable file. Now when you do click on it, it says there's an older version available in your software channel. That's Penta 1.6, so we can close this out. It says all pendencies are, are satisfied. You may, since I've been changing back and forth between Penta 1.6 and 1.7, you may need some dependencies here. If it does, it'll have a little details. You don't even have to click that because when you install the package, it goes and gets the dependencies first and installs those and then install the actual program itself. So I'm going to click install package. It brings up a dialog box allowing you to put in your password once you put your password in there click the authenticate button and then the package installer dialog box pops up and it goes through and installs uh, Penta 1.7 on your system. Now it's important that you remove Penta 1.6 because you're not upgrading Penta 1.6 to 1.7 by uh, updating the system. You're actually removing it and installing a newer version. Now when you see same version is already installed, when your install changes to reinstall, you're now ready to close it out. So if I go into my folder where I have some images here, let me go back and open my wallpaper. I right click, choose Penta, and it should open. Now I can go to view and say best fit, it makes it full screen. Now I can go open, go back to my wallpaper studio, there's the second one, open the next one. Now here I still have that feature where I can switch between images on the right hand side. However, if you look up here, this looks like your browser. Or if I'm working on this image, I can switch and work on this image, switch and work on this image, and I can have multiple images open. Now uh, Penta, I can say that it does struggle sometimes with working on very large 
file size images. So if you have a very large image, you might want to decrease the size. Uh, and this is really more for people that are working on web pages. You don't want a super large image where you got a five megabyte or larger image because people with low speed internet will have trouble downloading pictures from your web page if you have extremely large images on your website. So Pulpenta for me is great because I like to reduce the size of image. And if for some reason it's so large that you can't reduce the size uh, using Penta, then use another program. I like to open up a uh, image sometimes with Gthumb. Gthumb is an excellent tool. Then I use my tool over here, and then where it says resize image, I can click here. Then I usually choose 800 by 450 or whatever uh, fits proportionally to keep the image proportional. I don't want to make it where it's not. And then that way that it will work in Pinto. So Gthumb is an excellent tool for resizing them if it's so large that it crashes Pinto loading. So that's a good, great tool for doing that. Now here, like I said, is where you can switch between your tabbed images and work with each of those. Now let me show you some of the additional features that this has. But before I do, let me show you that it is updated. It's version 1.7. Now let, let me open up a picture here. Here's a picture I found. It's a royalty-free picture. I'll zoom in. I might zoom in one more time. I'm going to make sure that my paintbrush is selected. That should be the default tool on your tool uh, bar over here. And if it's not, click on the paintbrush. Then the extra features. And let me show you what's added on my web page. I'll give you a list. Not all the brushes are new to Penta 1.7. When you install Penta 1.7, you may have to go to the gallery if you don't have it installed. Click on the brush tool and then click the install button just as you did when I showed you how to install uh, the add-ins within the add-ins video or you can look at my add-ins website you click on install and it will install the brush collection when it does it will add additional brushes to your brush list the additional brushes that will be added is your blur alternative blur alternative 2 your intelligent erase your leaf your sharpen your smooth replace and your UV paint I may not show all of these because I got a detailed description of each of these below here's the blur the default blur that like the image here's the original image where the, this lady here this happy looking lady has several wrinkles you might not want to focus on her wrinkles so you can blur out the wrinkles so that you're focusing on her eyes her nice smile and her white hair and clothing so that way you're not focusing on the wrinkles here's using the blur alternative alternative and the blur alternative too works very similar they just have different strengths here's another tool the intelligent erase now this is kinda of hit and miss whether or not uh, it works. Like in this case I found an image that has some light poles in a wide open scenery. When I went to the intelligent erase it works like the eraser tool but it senses uh, what the darkest part of the image is that might stand out and it erases everything around it. So as I move the eraser it erased all the background of the sand or dirt and the sky around it leaving only the light poles. Now that is kind of a hit and miss. It doesn't always work great because when I went around the tree most of the leaves were erased from the trees but the dark trunk and some of the limbs were exposed. So it really didn't work great for the trees but it did work great for the light poles. Now the leaf brush when you go to like a, a blank document you can or a blank palette you can go to the leaf brush choose a color and then swipe across and you can change the size of it in this case you can see I have size paintbrush width of six as I go across my blank document or my blank palette it made it look like a leaf an evergreen leaf you can make it thicker or you can make it smaller by adjusting the brush width now the sharpen feature is one of those hit and miss features you can overkill by sharpen by going over the spot too much I sharpened around the lady's eyes. I don't know if you could tell, but it's kind of sharpened out to where it looks lighter around the edges of her eyes in this image compared to this one. Now here, the smooth and replace, sometimes it makes it look like it's smudging it. If you look here, she's kind of like got little black heads or little black dots under her nose, and some of them around the edge of her nose here. I went and used the smooth and replace, and I smoothed it out here, and if you look and compare here to here, it does look like it smudged it out. So you may like that feature, you may not. And then the UV paints, the last new brush added. I chose the regular red line and the regular blue line. Then I went to the UV paint brush 
and I went back to red and I did a spray across it went to blue and did a spray across it so that should be the same color blue the same color red but using the UV paint made it look like it spray painted across so it kind of give that UV ultraviolet uh, color to it now the disadvantage you heard me talk about in my last video that I made on Penta was when you upgrade to Penta 1.7 it doesn't work very well with very dark images. Here's Penta 1.6, here's Penta 1.7. As you can see, Penta 1.6 works much better. Now let me go up here and I'll show you the, the brush of uh, the blur. Now in this image here, I have this lady that I found royalty free on the internet. Make sure your paint brush is selected. Go down and I'll choose each of these. The blur is the default. I want to increase my brush stroke because if you leave a very small brush stroke you're not going to notice. Now when you start to move over the wrinkles they start blurring the wrinkles away so it, it makes the wrinkles start to disappear. Now it doesn't completely remove them it just makes them where they're not as easily noticed. So it's kinda like uh, you know you've heard people say they photoshopped an image. You know a lot of times uh, Photoshop was what started all this changing image and it really helped sell the product because it was one of the first ones. And then there's lots of companies out there or, or image software that will do the same thing now. And a lot of free ones but f when people talk about it they say I photoshopped it so really they're using another program. It's not really photoshopping it, you're just altering your image or making your image look better. Now when I go to blur alternate it does the same thing. Like I can go in here inside of her glasses and it just changes the strength of it. The same thing with the blur alternate too. So I can work in some areas here and it if you look now I'll go back to the original image. Here's the original image and here's the image that I just uh, changed. I, this is a zoomed in feature. So when you look at the original image and you look at what I just used by the blur alternate, it's like I'm using Photoshop except Penta is a free program. And I read where a lot of people criticize this Penta but as long as it still works and it works great and it's free uh, I'm not going to kick it. It's an excellent excellent program. So even though it is old, even though they're still not developing it, it works. And as long as something works I continue to use it and I try to emphasize to others I don't know how many people I reach but I try to emphasize that you can still do a lot of things with this program so that's the blur feature now I'm not going to save that uh, so I'll go back let me close this out and I'm going to say close without saving I'll go file new I'll just choose OK now with the other one which is the leaf if I choose here and let me choose green like an evergreen let me reduce the 20 down to 14. When I make my brush stroke, it makes it look like an evergreen tree. So if you're an artist and you're drawing trees, you might want to use the leaf brush and it gives that realistic look to your image. And I know I don't spend a lot of time talking about the artistic parts of using Penta. I've been mostly focusing on editing images or editing photographs. but Penta is also great for creating your own artwork and it does have additional brushes that will allow you to do that. Now, I'm not going to really focus on the intelligent brush because I don't think that is a great tool. Sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. It's hit and miss. So if I would bring up the same image and start erasing around it you would see the light poles still present and there's what I just showed you. The sharpen tool and I'll show you the way that works. Let me go and close out this image close without saving. I'll go file open and I will choose the crow's feet image that I found on the internet. Where you see that there's black heads here uh, what you want to do is you want to choose the sharpen. Now you want to choose a skin tone that matches that. I don't want to try to sharpen that image there with my default color that I have selected. In that case it's green. So I click on here then I'm going to pull this out of the way. I use my little color dropper and then I can choose some of the skin area here now, as you can see that's the same color when I choose OK now since I have the sharpened brush I can go through here and I can start to remove and I can make my paintbrush much larger and I can start to take away well, I'm doing too much it's making it too strong that's why I said it's kinda hit and miss you don't want it too large you want to sharpen it I'm using sharpen I'm sorry I should be using 
uh, the smooth replace. But now you can see what the sharpen does. I had so much of a brush that I was going in the same area and that can overkill and that's what I had. I should have been using smooth. So actually I just showed you uh, sharpen. Now here's smooth. So with the same color I'm going to go in here and where those little black heads are I'm going to smooth those out. I'm going to smooth them out. So for people I've read before they were looking for kind of like a smudge you can kind of think of the smooth replace as a smudge feature uh, like in an iPhoto Plus you know when I first started using uh, Linux I was looking for a program that give me that smudge brush and so by using the smooth replace changing it with the colors around it it works very similar to the smudge brush stroke so as you can see here let me go back to my original image and let me go back to where I was at where you can see the little dark spots here they're smoothed out and I know I, it looks kind of like you can tell it's smooth but if you zoom in much larger and spend a little bit more time working independently it won't look as much like I uh, smudged it out it will look like that those little dark spots were not there so if you spend more time on an image you can make the image look much better now I do like the smooth and replace I'm not a big big fan of the, sh the sharpen if you're a creator I do like the leaf uh, and I do like the blur alternate the blur alternate 2 and the original blur feature those are wonderful features of Penta Penta 1.7 the additional brushes now let me show you something about Penta I will close this out because I don't want to try to change uh, my theme while it's open because someone say might say well that's the problem of why it doesn't work it doesn't work very well with a dark theme so my default is the ambient mate if I switch to one that I uh, kind of customized and I go back into graphics and choose uh, Penta as you can see here it doesn't work very well with a dark theme the title bars and all that are still grayed out and I know that there's ways that you can go in here and fix that where the, the theme doesn't apply to the image and I've been working on that for the past several days and I'm having trouble with this particular program I can do it with like my uh, G edit notepad and all the others but with this one I haven't found a method yet I'll try to find something if I do I'll make a web page about it and make a video and if someone comes across this video and they know a way they can put the solution down below and I'll add that to my web page along with the, the person's name or username that told me how to do it so I can help others if they're using a dark theme and they want to use Penta 1.7 but other than that I still think and I said that at the bottom of my web page uh, I still think that Penta 1.7 advantages outweigh the disadvantage and there's no trouble if I want to use Penta and I don't want to see that look I can always go back to appearance change it back to my uh, ambient mate or the default theme and when I use my Penta 1.7 then it all blends in together so that to me looks very polished you know it doesn't have that much look difference if you look here it kinda looks like it is darker at the bottom and it kinda comes up into it has a little bit more polished look than Penta 1.6 it gives it a newer look and if you're into that newer look uh, that's fine but the look part I didn't care about the ability and features it adds to that was what I was focusing on and I wanted to make a video for those of you that would like additional add-ins uh, with Penta 1.7 it does give you that additional brushes here so hopefully this video has been helpful to you and have a great day